What's going on, everyone? I'm Diana, and this is Taylor, and we are the Home Girls Podcast, where we talk about all the things, motherhood, all the hoods, and we give you a little bit of that truth, reality, love, and of course, our little baby salt and honey. Yeah, all the things you guys ask us and all the things you guys want to hear. Anything that we have going on in our lives, we're just going to share it with our open, honest opinion. And we can't wait to have you guys along for the ride. So join us every single time we post a podcast here at the Home Girls Podcast. Woo! Woo! People always ask Taylor and I, how do you guys have a, a, like, do business while maintaining a friendship? You know, like, is there issues that you have mm-hmm. with one another? And we're like, no, I know that whenever I'm alone and I get asked that question, I'm like, no, I love and respect Taylor. And I think the biggest core thing is like, we have this very similar foundation. We operate from the same foundation. We both believe in Christ. We both love and respect one another. We both, we both view respect as a very important mm-hmm. trait. We like to control our tongue towards one another. I mean, you cannot be in a And a we're also not, we are okay with the honesty too. It's like, and we hold each other accountable and it's like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, we want each other to be the best version always. Mm-hmm. And also if we make mistakes, that's normal. It's all mm-hmm. good. Ching, ching, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Making that money. Who got my money? Yeah. <laughs> Who's got my money? <laughs> but it is, it's, it's just that, that's just, how you maintain any kind of relationship in business, outside of business. Mm -hmm. You have the hard conversations. It's not the end of the world. You can't be too sensitive. You can't take too much personal and you figure it out. And also another thing too is like her and I in business, like we're married in a sense, you know, not like a intimate kind of way. I'll leave that to Ryan, but you want me to take you out? I'll take you out, baby. We are for each other's forever dates, but <laughs> literally. <laughs> but I always say like, oh well, um, oh no, I've lost my thought where I was going with that. Shoot, doing business together. Oh yeah, our friendship has became even deeper because of business. One hundred percent. Because you have, we've had to go through some tough shit. Yeah, personally, mm-hmm. which also involves our business because the two are intertwined. So. We have Salty this- Honey has been through so much and it has been through a beating. Mm-hmm. Like we have torn that girl up. She has been in you halls. She's been, I mean, she's just been all over the place. And no matter what, it's like protect the baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like protect the baby at all costs, whatever that looks like. Even if it's not always comfortable or whatever, it's like what is best for, for Salty Honey. Mm-hmm. And so we have that same kind of it's not about me and it's not about d it's like what is what's best for salty honey in this moment when do you think we had that moment of clarity of like okay salty honey is not a hobby or like this passion project you know because that's what most small businesses are when you start them out of your house they're oh cute and fun and it's like let's do this for fun and then it's like oh like the demand is there Mm -hmm. and this is like can be something massive and then the dream becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. But where do you think we had that first like aha moment? Where it's like, wh- I know when it was. And it was when we finally got told from that investor. Mm-hmm. We were just trying to like, you know, pick his brain and see what's going on. And it's when he paused and he was so blown away by what we were doing that we kind of were like, what do you mean? You know, because mm-hmm. we didn't realize, mm-hmm. you know, our scale. We didn't realize that our numbers were as impressive as they were. We just, we didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I guess to hear somebody who had been in the game because we didn't, we didn't have anybody around us like that really. And he was just like, I'm telling you right now, like this is very rare. He's like, I'm not really sure I've ever seen a bootstrap business at this level with just two people mm-hmm. with no employees <laughs> doing the numbers that you guys do. Yeah. Absolutely. Custom designing all the things. He was just mind blown. And I think that's when we were like, wait, yeah, are we cool? Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably where our seed of like business 100%. mentorship started too. Because then he gave us those, those, those specific nuggets. goals. He's like, uh-huh. hey, you know, when you hit X, Y, and Z, and we're like, how do we hit that? We're going to hit that, you know? But you don't, again, you don't know what you don't know. We didn't even know what we were doing was impressive. We mm-hmm. didn't know. Yeah. So was- I think that awareness of just being like, okay, we have something here. Yeah. That was a really cool moment. We need to like start a journal of all these things. Well, we have this. We'll have video footage. That's why I was telling the stories. <laughs> Documentation, baby. Documentation. Well, it's been a 
it's been a fun ride and we've just are getting started. We're, that we're is how it feels. Started. And I feel like we've been saying that for a long time, but truly that's how it feels right now. Well, Things are clicking. Yep. They're all going into place. And now we see the scale and it's like, oh my gosh, this is like I was telling the other day on that call we were on. It's like, I cannot even, now I can see it mm -hmm. like walking into a three story, you know, office space of just badass, hustling women, excited to go to work, pumped up mm -hmm. and creating all the kind of community aspect we have, but within a career space and giving them jobs and bringing money into their homes. Oh man, I we're going to have like, there's going to be a, a full blown working space where it's like one girl's just the bad girl. One girl is just the leggings and sports bra girl. The next girl is the graphic girl. The next girl is the yeah. swimwear girl. The and next walking into each room, I can yes. see it, you know, and everyone just, you know, being stoked and pumped and and you know what truly sets us apart is that we we cut and sew. Everything is our designs. It's not like oh, we're going on a website and we're going to find something to rip the tag off and put our tag in and and put our graphic on it and call it a. We don't we don't do that anymore. We. Not, not that we ever did. We we just create everything on our well, own. Well, there were certain things like we always did our own leggings and bras and all the things. But when it came to hoodies and all that stuff, we were just like, you know, you buy it from the same place any other small business does. And then we realized like we can make mm -hmm. our own hoodies. So every stitch, every, the shape of the hoodie, the shape of the cuffs, the shape of the Everything mm -hmm. is pockets. Yep. What we're doing with the pockets, it's straight from our brains. All we know is that a pocket is non-negotiable on every single legging That's it. and hoodie and jacket. That's like, it. pockets. I get so upset when I put on anything else that doesn't have that. Even our samples, when our samples come and, like, maybe she didn't put a pocket in where it needed yeah. to be or it was too small. I'm like, this is not going to work I go to, like, us. put my keys or my phone in and I'm like, mm. Yeah. Or you're just, you <laughs> drop, they drop because you think a pocket's there yeah. and there's no pocket. Oh, the worst. Like, oh, this is great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's we're, not going to work. We're going to revise that. Yeah. <laughs> we need to fix that one. <laughs> yeah. And then removing that center crotch seam, that was a game changer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially the more kids you have, you really need to get rid of them. The center seam because that meatiness is gonna be popping. <laughs> that meat, yeah. Remember, you posted that reel, and then and then you were like, Wait, everyone's saying they love the camel toe, and it's like, Oh, yeah, that's right. We're that like, was such a popular We're reel. all thinking like a camel toe is a bad thing, yes. and they're all coming out like they love the no. camel toe. All the guys, no, I'm and like, I didn't. Since when do dudes love a camel toe? Well, no, there's all these girls that are going viral that on thing? Instagram, a camel toe. Positive or negative? Yeah. See, not, not into for me. It. it doesn't float my boat either if I had a boat. <laughs> Honestly, it's because the girls are going viral for pulling up their pants on Instagram or TikTok. And then you yeah. can see the like, and then they, you know, pose with their legs apart for the photo. And they're in the gym. And you can like clearly see like the outline of her lady parts. And you're like, yeah, but they Whoa. only, yeah, you but, put it out but there like that. the only ones that you see that do that are you know, children it, free, children free. It's it, it. Everything is where it's supposed to be. You know, you don't see the, the regular woman out there, you know, with a little bit of, you know, yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> life. <laughs> she's been through some life. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. the girl seen <laughs> things that, you know, I never wish upon those lady parts, anybody, seen but some things. It, so things happen and Gravity happens. Kids happen. You don't. You don't want to see me in that reel doing what they do. You don't want to see it. Yeah. So when we when we You'd came out upset. with that first legging that had that that freeness there, yeah. I was like putting it out there. I was stretching in that reel. I just put my leg up on the counter and was like max. But all those little stretch. things, it's like you know, you just eventually you're like, oh, we can change this or <laughs> change that. You know. Exactly. So that's what we do. Yeah. What's been your favorite part of business like that you could think of in the last seven years? What's been the highest point for you thus far? Or what's been the favorite, most favorite memory? And now I'm asking you multiple questions. What has been the best I part about doing business? The, the, it's like the building, the grinding, the, and then seeing a result. Mm. And I think the people, mm -hmm. I can't really imagine doing this without a community, like mm -hmm. just being owners of something, building something and not really having any idea. Like I just, I can't really, I don't think I'd have as much joy in it without the community aspect of it. 
Yeah, the home building girls. so many multiple. It's, yeah, just all the love and all the support and everyone just. I don't. I don't know. To me, that's just a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I think that the most favorite chapter that we're having, and I think it's hard to say because. I think every chapter is fun, but this one right now is really fun because I'm seeing like to be able to train someone and shadow Mm -hmm. someone like under you Mm -hmm. and just see like trying to document and, and explain in words what you do is, is not easy. It's not like, you're like, I don't know. I, I, I just do a lot of things and you just, yeah, you try to figure that out. By far the hardest part. Yeah. You're like, wait, do I do anything? (laughs) Yeah, you start thinking like, I I don't don't do that much. I don't do anything because I can't think of, I know, but it's like you just, you're so programmed to just do, do, do. But I think our jobs are so dope Mm -hmm. and what we do is so dope. So to be able to turn around and give somebody else the opportunity to learn the things that we taught ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Is insane. Like teaching somebody else who, again, didn't have any of that experience and getting and seeing them light up when they learn design and manufacturing and, and seeing what can come like when Mel first saw one of her designs on a towel or on this, mm-hmm. it's, it's something magical. I know. And you almost like, we're so used to that, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's what, that's just what we do, you know? Yeah. So it's like that luster of like, Oh my God, it, it's a big eye opener when you see your girls creating graphics and then their graphics are going mm-hmm. on to our items and you're like, seeing their eyes light up and you're like back over and over and over again. It's like a high. It's like, I know. And I, and seeing that reminds me of like that joy of just, Uh and then that nervousness, right. Before you go and launch it, it's like, how's it going to go? Like, this is truly something straight from my heart and my mind. Mm -hmm. How are they going to respond to it? And when you see, you know, thousands of people just going nuts over it, Mm. It's, it's, I can imagine it's like creating a song and, and listening to an audience, people sing it Mm -hmm. while you're singing it. I can imagine it's something along those lines, just like, wow, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the people that make something so special. It it, it really is. And that's what makes us unique too, is the community that we have behind us. Mm -hmm. It's pretty incredible. It is. It's very rare too. It's what other brand do you see has this like massive fan base behind it you know like yeah don't get me wrong you'll have you know your nike or your lululemon or whatever but we're talking about a concentrated group of women that just ride with you yeah they're here for it for who you are yes and like they're okay with who you are but again you know being comfortable with who you are and then realizing how many people will choose to support you yep for that our girls are the best we love you you girls the best okay do you want to answer some questions yeah let's do it Okay. We put it out there on the gram. Yep. And we uh, had some questions from y'all and we want to answer them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So D, Eric said top three advice for business owners. For each one of us, huh? Yeah. He wanted both of us to answer, but top three. Okay. So number one, never give up. Mm -hmm. You have a dream, believe it, achieve it. You don't give up. Okay. Um, And don't be afraid to dream extra hard too. So if you have a huge dream and you're just like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get there? Don't think like that. Just think of the little steps in place that you need to achieve to create that bigger dream. Don't give up. Right. And I think that was kind of like two in one, but we'll go to number two. Um, You're always going to have to learn. Do not let an ego or a know-it-all attitude or a chin up or what is it? Nose up. Nose up attitude. Block your... It doesn't matter if someone, if you do a million dollars and you have a business owner who's your friend who does a $50,000 in sales, or you have the friend who does a hundred million dollars in sales. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn. And the guy who's done 50,000 maybe has implemented something that you don't have implemented that would really help out your business. So just never always have your ears open and be willing to learn and listen to everyone around you. And you can take what you want to take and don't take what you don't want to take. Um, and then number three, oh my God, I'm on the spot here. Yeah, you are. Number three. Give it to me. Uh, don't be afraid to start expanding into a team when needed. I think that was like big, scary kind of moment of like, okay, how am I gonna like replicate what I do? Or what do I even tell them to do? Yeah. And yeah. then you just get to a point where like, Almost like don't be afraid to ask for help. That's when you need to implement a team is like, yeah, it's okay to ask 
for help mm-hmm. and to get help. Yeah. And so Mel- Melissa, um, she started as a warehouse, but we quickly realized like, oh, she doesn't need to be in the warehouse. She has a lot of um, mm-hmm. talent to be out um, doing other things in the business. And so I just said, grab your computer and your notebook and you're just going to sit next to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every phone call is going to be on speaker. We're just going to do everything here together. And you're just going to start mimicking everything that I do because that's how, that's the only thing, how, that's, that's how we train her in the warehouse. Mm-hmm. We didn't, she didn't follow a manual. I right. just went in there and worked we didn't with her have every a day. manual. No, nope. we're working on a manual. We're working on a manual. Yeah. How about you? What about you? T- top three business items Same. from the creative end. Same for the first one. It's like, don't quit. It's not an option. Yeah. And you're going to want to all the time. And there's going to be slow seasons and there's going to be times where you think nobody's paying attention or what am I even doing this for? Or is this even worth it? And it is. You just have to on the hard days, on the good days, when things, numbers are high, when numbers are low, Mm -hmm. you just have to keep going. That's one, two, anything that isn't aligning, you know, with where it is you're wanting to go, you have to remove it. Mm -hmm. It just has to go. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like everything I'm doing is this getting me closer or farther from where I'm desiring to go and where I want my business to go and being okay with that. Because that was hard for us a little bit. We're like, if we say this, what if we lose these people? If we talk about this, Mm -hmm. it's like eventually, you know, it's kind of like you, what aligns with what it is we want to do. And there's, there's some things going on today's world. It doesn't align with us. Mm -hmm. And so that is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's kind of got to be in alignment in your life, getting your family on the same page, getting everyone on the same page. Mm -hmm. And that might mean some friends got to go or any, especially removing anybody that, that makes you small (coughs) or tries to keep you small or (coughs) limits your, just wherever it is you're going, you know, those people they've, they've got to go, you know, and they might come back around and they might not, but you just got to keep going. And then number three, Mm. number three same as your number two you have to be willing to try something different that might not be your way you know being Mm open-minded to new things and understanding you don't know everything you only know so much Mm -hmm. you're gonna need to know a lot more you might need to hire on new people in your life or sphere and get around different brains where you're like in completely different businesses or whatever. And it's like, you just, you have to be willing to grow and learn. And that's business wise. And that's especially true. I feel like developmentally making sure like your headspace is good and making sure you're just, you're taking care of you because if you're not taking care of you, your business is going to go to pieces. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with those things too. Especially when you say you got to take care of you. Yeah. Because if you don't take care of you, the whole world's going to fall apart. That's just even in your home life too. 100%. So you can't can't do home or business without taking care of you. Right. You're number one. And that's so backwards from what we've been taught, huh? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you got to take care of everyone else around Put you. Put yourself last. Yeah. Right? And it's like in certain ways, yeah, we are last. We're even last in, when it comes to business. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of areas of life, but you have to wake up and choose you. You have to wake up and prioritize you. Mm -hmm. And that's not saying like, screw you, screw this. Like, no, it's like when you have so much on your shoulders, Mm -hmm. you better make sure that you like what you see in the mirror. Yep. That you love what you see in the mirror, that you love who you are when you speak. You better make sure. I have to be, I have to maintain the bare minimum things that I like to be happy. Mm -hmm. I have to have my hair done. Mm -hmm. I have to have a pedicure. (laughs) Not a manicure. Don't care about manicures. Pedicure for whatever reason, my gangly toes. You, my but hair. you do need those press-ons. I do need press-ons. I don't have them right now. So mm, we're going to hide the <laughs> hands. But I love my Sally Hansen's press-ons for my fingernails. Mm-hmm. And um, I have to be, like, active. Up and mm-hmm. at them. Like, I can't, like, I am not a, like, let's, wa- oh, it's noon. Like, let's watch a movie. I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like, we are grinding. And that's even something. But those are the things that. Again, it, that comes with alignment of just making sure it's like, is me stopping right now to like take a break and watch this? Does that get me closer to where it is I want to go? And so many people, they do this thing mentally where they're like, I deserve 
The break is like, no, you don't. You haven't earned that yet. Mm-mm. You haven't earned that that ability to sit down at noon and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. What have you done to earn that? Yeah. What what goal did you hit? What this did you hit? You know, and it's one thing if it's like prioritizing your family time and that moment with your kids when your kids are like, hey, you know, I'm really needing some attention. Mm-hmm. No worries. That's different. But just thinking that you just deserve idleness. It's like, no, you deserve to reach your goals. You deserve to make money. You deserve to to pursue what it is that you set up to accomplish. Yep. Absolutely. I think that it's so funny where we've been on this business journey, but you know, a year and a half ago, we got to this point where we were like, we need to like figure out what else to do. Like we've like capped off. At- we've done, we've gone as far as we can possibly go on with our own. what we know yeah. and where we are. We don't have any new ideas. Yeah. There was nothing else. We and were tapped. We went to this business seminar and we were just like, we're doing it. We're committing. We're going to go in and, and go to these seminars. Commit and we're going to first figure it out later. Exactly. <laughs> and so we started going to these seminars and it's incredible how much you don't know until you go to m- mentorship programs where people who are billionaires and multi, multi hundred millionaires. And they're telling you their strategies and what you can implement and how you can do things certain ways. And you're like, holy shit. And an ego could have sat in the room and been like, that's not going to work for my business. Yeah. That's not, that doesn't even apply here. They're talking about this business and that business. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Shut up. Every single okay. business yeah. can do these methods. Eat and a little like, bite of your humble pie and, and sit back and just allow yourself to Mm-hmm. Be a, you have to be a sponge mm-hmm. at all times. At all times. So that's been We realized we awesome. were dumb as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. But we got super far. Like you have to think like even they said in that seminar, like if you've reached a million dollars in sales in one year, but you're just like, man, where do I go from here? You know, commit to these seminars. Mm-hmm. And we were like, we're doing it. Cause that's, they spoke to us literally, you know, and you realize like, oh, this is a, the, for thousands of people in a room, how yeah. many of us were at that, that margin where it's like, this is a, a wall we keep running into. Mm-hmm. How do we scale past this wall? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now look at, we, we had a killer 2023 and now here we are in 2024 motivated as ever mm-hmm. went to another seminar last weekend. It's almost like we need to go back to that same seminar too. <laughs> There's going to be some other information that mm-hmm. it's three days from like nine to five. It's, it's a real one. It's, it's real daunting. And I'm going to tell you what, afterwards, you know, our minds are so overstimulated. We're like, let's go to dinner. Dinner leads to drinks, drinks and drinks lead to 4am, you know, and it just, and then waking up. And you're waking up at, at 10 a.m. Yeah, but well, well, we shouldn't have woken up at 10 a.m. I mean, <laughs> we were late, but you know, it's it was still. Oh, and you know, want to know something? Actually, going back to that top three advice for business owners, something that I would put within that top three is you have to get comfortable with social media. Get over it. I don't care, even care what kind of business you're in. Get over it. That's right. You have to. Actually, speaking of social media, I'm just gonna actually post. Right now that we're here, I'm going to do a little story posty. Hey. Oh, my God. I just, I look tired. (laughs) I look, I look tired. Okay, ready for the next question? Yep. Okay, Hunter asked us, what's the craziest story situation that you two have? (sighs) Oh. What do you mean? Like, you're saying, like... I mean, like we're talking general? like 14 years old. We were stealing Diana's truck, parents' truck out of the garage, scooting it back out of the garage, and then we would roll it down her hill. Mm-hmm. And so we got to the end of the street and then started up, and we did not come back for a while. And then we were climbing, and then your mom planted rose bushes underneath your window so we'd stop going out of it. And we're like, we ain't scared of some thorns. Yeah. We're no like, biggie. ow, trying to climb in the window. And then I'll never Scratches forget. all over our legs. I just told my dad this story too. Um, they had a GT. My parents had like six cars, okay? Like there was one for every purpose of life. I'm like, get rid of all these cars. Anyways, there was a Mustang GT in the garage convertible. And I'll never forget how we, I had st- stolen it many times. Mm-hmm. Us many of times have gone out in this Mustang GT. Yeah. And finally I go in there one night to go take it and go on my joy ride in the middle of the night and it won't start. And so- what do I do? Pop the hood. The batteries are disconnected. I'm like, 
What idiots! Can't believe my parents <laughs> literally thought they could get me out. <laughs> they to also stay taught here. me how to put back in a battery. <laughs> yeah. So jokes on you! Jokes on you! <laughs> Hooked it back in, put those nuts back on, headed out, did my thing, and then they left for vacation one week too. I do remember this, and there when was, we had the pool party. There, which one? <laughs> yeah, it was. There was a lot, <laughs> lots of grottos. Um, so we, I couldn't find any keys to the car. So they like they hit him all, put him mm. in the safe. Found one car key. It was to my dad's work truck. I was like, sure. got a key. <laughs> We're going, girl. We got the work truck. We're rolling up to that party in Lake Elsinore. Oh, oh, I know what story. I know what story. <laughs> Let's tell the Havasu Swinger story. Oh my. Yeah. That's a good one because we were yeah. young. That was one for the books. We were probably sixteen or so, and we—I mean, we were young. So I had just gotten my license, and I'd actually just gotten back from boarding school. Yeah. <laughs> and our friends, so Taylor and I were always the youngest out of our friend group. So this was July Fourth weekend, mm -hmm. and we had told I had went over to her, and I was like, her mom and her mom had met me, but never had like a serious conversation. I was like, oh well, I'm. Um, she has her license. I have my she's license. 18. I'm 18. Yeah. No. You know, like yeah. we're good. She's just going to come over to my house for the weekend. My parents were going to go out on the boat, like Lake Elsinore, like total lies, right? Like, cause back then we didn't have no tracking, cell find phone. my iPhone, mm -mm. you know, yeah. air tag, nothing, nothing. And Freedom. then she, same thing with her. So same thing with me. I was like, Hey, I'm going over to Taylor's house for the weekend. Um, we're going to just hang out. Mm, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, uh, they let, for whatever reason, us take the expedition. Why? I don't no, we know. had the White Ranger. No, all six of us got in the expedition. Was it the Black Expedition? It was expedition? the sixth expedition. Dang. Yes, all six of us. There's six of us that I went out we here. were in the White. Maybe that was a different half of suit time. Caitlin, Nikki. Oh, that's right, because we have that photo. Amanda, yeah. And there was one other girl. Was it Renee? Was Renee a wall? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Well, we, um, we, we hop in the car. We got to Lake Havasu. Okay. And we're like, and we're um, staying at like an older homie's house. Yes, because he works at seventy four Motorsports with yeah. me, and his friends don't know that have the boat that you know you got a couple underage girls. The rest of everyone was eighteen. Yes, they did. Are you mean to tell me at your age now you don't see a 16, 17 year old and know she's sixteen, seventeen? Okay, well listen, I, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. That. I used to believe that. I'd be like, yeah, that's right. I just look mature. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just mature, and they always tell me I'm, I'm so mature until I hit this age, and I'm like nasty because I know a 16 year old when I hear, see, and communicate with a 16 year old. We were not fooling nobody; they just pretended. Yeah, that is true. That is true. They were nasty. Yeah, they were nasty. Okay, so anyways, and they're probably gonna be watching this. That's fine. <laughs> we you was nasty. We know you, you knew. Okay. <laughs> We're not having your back on in no more. So we go out and we're like, the first day, it's awesome. We're like in this giant boat mm -hmm. with these couple guys, six chicks, three dudes, like they're living. in heaven, right? They're yeah. living. And they, with my fake Louis Vuitton bikini. Yeah. That I got at the, um, Hey, listen, it was, it was 2006. <laughs> it was 2006. The Lake Elsinore swap meet. I thought it looked legit. <laughs> I'm like, nobody's going to know. <laughs> Look at Nobody my Louis knows. with my fake. I think they were like Versace's or something, you know? <laughs> they were like those big white, like gaudy ones. Oh my god. The gosh. goggles. Yeah. So then we go out and one of our girlfriends is a floozy. Okay. It's unfortunate, but she just, just weird things started happening with her the day she turned 18. Actually long it was before right she before that. Yeah. So we go, we go up to the sandbar. You know the friends you have that's just like, you're just like, you can't get through to them and they just continue to make horrific decisions, but you still love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was her. Mm -hmm. So we make our way up to the sound bar and we end up ditching the three guys that were with and their boat. And we're like, we're going to stay at the sand bar and party, right? We'll get a ride back to, to London bridge. And we get on this wakeboard boat with There's these three couples. And they're like, Come on, come over, like, come on, yeah, like we have party this, tonight. we have that, yeah, and they're like super nice, and but we're getting introduced, and it's like, hey, this is, um, you know, my wife so and so, and this is my husband so and so, and I'm like, okay, cool, like you know, everyone's married, like it's a safe group, right? And then all of a sudden, I started seeing like Greg's wife with over there with Daniel and like Daniel's wife over there, you know, with Jim. And, and then I'm you like, got the, the driver of the boat who's married to that hot little blondie at the front of the boat. Now he's stroking my thigh. I'm like, what yeah, the and hell all is of a sudden going we on? We kind of start 
I look at Dee and I'm like, something ain't right. Like, yeah. the math ain't mathin', but the we're math night. ain't mathin'. Like, didn't he say that? She was like, yeah. And I'm like, what? Uh, yeah. Did, it, and I was naive. I didn't know people did that. Like, I still didn't know people did that. Like, my parents not are- to that level of openness, I guess. So right. I was, like, expecting a fight to bust out any money. And I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. they're just really drunk. Yes. You know? So yes. that's what I permissed it as. Did she come back with us at that moment, or did she stay on the boat already? No, she moment? came back with us. So we, we like, got we back got to London go. Bridge. We got back to London yeah. Bridge, and we were like, we're going to go home. We're going to go get reset, and then we'll come over oh, yeah, and go party. Like, it was a big party, and we yeah. weren't of age to get into any bars or yes. clubs. So when they said, oh, no, there's a big party at a house. Yeah, we had a big we house. Were like, perfect because yeah. we can't get in anywhere so this works out great and our friends that were in high school all had like hotel rooms and they were like oh we don't know what we're doing tonight we'll yeah. just you know who's gonna get the alcohol yeah. you know we yeah. didn't know what we were gonna do so we go back we get ready and then we're we like head free out. booze house party let's rock and roll so it's 10 o'clock at night it's quite early right we head to the house we walk in <laughs> <laughs> the decor was just strobe lights dicks everywhere and dildos and sex toys all over everywhere. the kitchen island like the streamers it, it's like if you were at a bachelorette party right where there's just wieners everywhere uh-huh. but like real dildos everywhere yeah like on the walls i mean i've never seen so many gad you're like you know it's just too much you're walking in like there's gagged. not enough people here <laughs> like, for these dildos on? yeah what is going on here and why are they all over the kitchen island and, and there was no furniture in the wigs no in the, the but there was no furniture too right. So they have this music blaring, strobe yep. lights going, dildos are all over the kitchen island. And then they come out with these little cute, like school girl. They're like, like come on, we have outfits. And we outfits look at each other. We're like, we're going to go immediately. We're yes. like, we need to get the F out of here. And then we look over at our girlfriend and we're like, we got to go. And she disappears into the back. She bedroom. refuses. She's like, no, I'm staying. These so are my she, friends. I'm staying. So she goes back and we go back. And we're like, hey, Keelan, I'm like, we really should get out of here. Like, like let's get out of here. Yeah, and she's like, we're staying. And so we're like, okay, we're not getting her out of here. I'm not staying. So we're like, we're going to give you one hour. And in one hour, we are showing back up at the store because we're not, we can't just leave you with these people for the entire night. And we're not staying. And she's refusing. And she is 18. Yeah. So she she's older can do whatever yeah. the F she wants, right? And we're just but like, she's we're going to give you an leave. hour. Yeah. yeah. So we go, we go bebop around to our other friends' places and all this. Mind well, you, then- this is a homegirl move. You have to make decisions for your friends sometimes that they will not make for themselves. Don't judge. Yeah. We show back up at the house because she is not answering her cell phone. Yeah. We show back up to the house. They open the door. They crack open the door. Hey. And I feel yeah, like she Caitlin's was like laying and everyone was kind of like, it was like she was almost like the center stage. She had on the outfit and the wig. And then we're like, she was like, I'm not, I'm not coming I'm out. I'm staying the night here. I'm not. Yeah. She's like, and I'm we're not like, coming out. the fu you are. Yeah. And so guess what we did? Guess what D did? Guess what I did? I mean, I supported I it because I, oh, I opened up the car door and said, yeah, load her in. I said, girls, she's not coming out. We have a big problem. I said, <laughs> get her. So I start yelling because they keep shut, like they kept shutting mm-hmm. the door. And so I start pounding. They opened the door back up and I was like, she's not 18. We did push the door open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's not 18. Ask for her ID. Well, knowing that she didn't have an ID on her. Mm-hmm. I'm all asked for her ID. She doesn't, she doesn't have an idea. She's not 18. Just FYI. I'm all, and none of us are. We're all 17. Mm-hmm. That's my parents' expedition. The popo's about to pull up. I'm like, I'll call the cops give on us, you if you don't give kick us her out. girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's screaming from the house. I'm, I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. We're like, no, you're not. Come here, little baby. <laughs> yeah, it's time you're to go 17. Home. <laughs> and she's like, I just turned 18 a month ago. Yeah. Like, I'm 18. And we're like, she just turned 17 a month ago. And I'm like, I'll call her mom if you want me to. Yeah. And they, after like, it took them a good amount of time. Like about, I if I would have heard that as a 30 year old person, mo- they had to have been on some kind of drugs. Yeah. If I heard that, I would have immediately booted her out the door. Yeah. It took them a considerable amount of time to like give her the final boot. They finally did. And then she's kicking and screaming. I mean, she mm. was like screaming bloody murder. She couldn't believe we did that to her. We're doing it for you. Shh. And Shh. we finally get her in the car and we're like, dude, these people are swingers. Like, what have you, what are, are you out of your mind? Yeah, and we're you were about like, to be stuffed like a turkey in every which way you can imagine. She probably did get stuffed like a turkey. We Listen, probably took her sex. from getting stuffed like I'm a just, turkey. I'm just, you know. She got stuffed like a turkey, didn't she? Diana drug her by her hair. 
Well, I had to. <laughs> Into the car. I'm just going to fast forward I, I that. wasn't going to go there, but. That, I was going to say that's one of, but we have hundreds of these. Hundreds yeah. and hundreds. We almost need to make hundreds. a book of like memories. Yeah. Book of I mean, memories. just like a few weekends ago, there's more. It's like, it, there's just hundreds. Yeah. At all times. Yep. The yep. situations that we've been in, got ourselves into. And you know what? Instead Me- of like metal heads, because we used to like, we were big time, like, you know, we liked metal, metal and punk rock and uh, we would go to these Hollywood. things. When we yeah. were 18, we'd go to Hollywood. Yeah. We we just, we did all the things. And it was awesome, honestly. We've had what a life. What a life. What a life. Oh, <laughs> what a life. And we're still here. We still out here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Surviving <laughs> and thriving. <laughs> okay. So Tanya that's a good story. said, "How do you find balance? How do we find balance while raising littles, running businesses, taking care of you? <sighs> barely, have, barely There's finding no balance. Thing. There's no balance. There's no balance. And especially as an entrepreneur, you're not going to mm-hmm. follow this schedule where you're like, mm-hmm. I've set out this schedule. No. Guess what? Wake up, take my kid to school, come home, work. Nap time. Work. After nap time, she's mm-hmm. watching a show. I'm working." Go pick up my other son. Come back home. Work. Cook dinner. Come back from activities. And then get them all ready for bed. And then guess what I do? I source into the night. Mm -hmm. I stay up talking to the other side of the world until 1 o'clock in the morning. Like, I wake up at 8 and I do the whole thing all over. So it's like... There is no... There's... There's... Not a balance. Mm -mm, There's not, I don't get to. I think even expecting that there's going to be a balance will set you up for failure because I think the beauty and what it is you build is the chaos. Mm -hmm. It's the chaos and it's not meant for everybody. Nope. It's It's truly not. It's not meant for everybody. I mean, there's some people where it's like even being a stay at home mom, you don't feel like you have balance, right? And that's just that one aspect. And I've, I've been in those shoes too where it's like you don't, I don't feel like anything in motherhood, you never feel balanced Mm -hmm. because. You, you're always, you've never done it before. Yep. Each day is like, you don't know. And it's a human with their own little, you know, struggles and problems and ideas and opinions. And there's no balance in motherhood in general. There's no balance in self-care in general. You just do your best. And there's mm-hmm. definitely no balance in building a business. Now add all of those together mm-hmm. in one day. Mm-hmm there's there's no balance expecting there to be a balance I feel like is is just setting yourself for for disappointment yep because you're always going to feel like you're failing in one way or another absolutely no matter what and it's not for the faint of heart too like some people like to be led some people like to be told what to do there's only one aspect of my life that I like that well it's one or the other either you're an entrepreneur or you work for somebody who became an entrepreneur those are the two structures and both are (laughs) they're different kind of humans and we need both. We, we need, need employees both. and yes. we need business owners, period. And, and some people want to come need in and be told a lot what more to do. better business owners, but we need, we need yeah. both. But so, I wish a, a part, my whole, even when I was a, a, you know, younger teenager, I'll never forget when I worked at 74 Motorsports, you know, that year. And I showed up every day at, I think it was 745, open the shop, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I worked every day till three or five o'clock every single day, making $6.25 an hour. And I had it made. That's how I felt. But it was hard not being able to leave on weekends and whenever mm-hmm. I wanted and, and doing the things whenever I wanted. But I had a full-time job. And I just remember thinking, like, being creative, like, I want to have a business one day where we create something, create products. Like, I saw the benefit of owning a business when mm-hmm. I worked for that business. And so it's, it's, y- you always seem to grind gears and go against the grain. That's how you know that it's, it's owning a business, mm. successful business. And you have a high threshold for chaos and pressure and what might make some people buckle rather easily. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, you almost look at it with a smile. It's just, it's two different types of energies and neither one is better than the next. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just, it is the people that can say, I know this isn't going to look balanced, mm-hmm. possibly ever. Nope. <laughs> well, that's why you do have those women who are stay-at-home moms and their husbands own uber successful mm-hmm. businesses. And they say, my husband for 10 years was gone in the morning before mm-hmm. the kids got up and came home. And that right also takes a special bed. kind of woman, yeah. you know, and that's to be praised too. It's like everything, and they probably don't feel balanced either, mm-hmm. but- they found a balance in respecting and appreciating what their men are doing while they're gone, mm-hmm. you know, and the man probably has a balance in respecting and appreciating what she does is at home. It takes two to create any kind of mm-hmm. even flow. Okay. What's next? On so basically list? 
there's no balance in raising no balance. littles, running businesses, and taking care of you. You just try and do your best, and then you black out at the end of the day, and then you wake up and you do it again. That's right. Uh, Moto Wheel wants to know who is the responsible one. In what kind of way? <laughs> I guess I would be the most responsible one. F like, f I'm responsible for our finances. Yeah. I'm responsible for Num sourcing. Anything numbers and like that kind of <clears throat> stuff is definitely sourcing and more responsible. She's responsible in the sense for our business, though. That's what, it, what we're talking right now in the sense Like, of if business. we were to go, neither one of us are super responsible when we go out. No, like because in it's life. kind of a hit or miss. Like, well, like we I said, always are flip flopped. Mm -hmm. We we balance off. We know. Okay, I can if I see that she's the one that's going to choose to be a little irresponsible. I step into being responsible. If that's right. If I'm being a little a little cuckoo, Diana's Diana's the one. You yep. know that we we just pay attention to the atmosphere, and then mm -hmm. we already know how the night's going to go, and we know one of us, no matter what, we don't even talk about it. We just watch. We just know whoever hits the drink quicker. Probably when we get to the restaurant, like I need a drink. We're like, okay, so one of us stays a little more responsible to call the Ubers and call the cars and do all the things. It's it's about it's. Yeah, and I'm we the just one know. that's like, okay, I'm not letting her out of my sight tonight. Mm -hmm. In any form or fashion, this right. chick Taylor! is not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that is me. I'm like, check, check, check. Who are so all I the think girls? it depends on the day. Yeah, it does. Yeah. it's And there's days even it's a great work balance. that I'm more responsible in the work atmosphere than maybe she is, and she can be more responsible in the work atmosphere than I am. It just, And that is really the key of having a good partnership. Yeah. Boom. You just notice and yep. you just pay attention. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to step it up. She's like, oh, Diana's anything. pregnant again. Fuck, I'm really going to have to yeah, step it up. We don't even need months. to have the conversation. It's like, <laughs> no, it's all good, <laughs> you know? Or she might be like, ah, oh, Taylor's really going through it. She kind of knows, you know, what's going on personally. And it's like, she'll just know to kind of handle things, not remind me of the things I'm forgetting or missing. It's just like, I handled that. Don't worry mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. I yep. got the POs already submitted. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Absolutely. But that's any Give good. and pull, baby. Yeah. It's a balance. That's right. That's the only balance we have. Good balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that Which aspect. is also being imbalanced, but it's like you don't go imbalanced with the other person. You make sure you. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's got to be out of the water to be able to pull them up. Yes. At all times. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Ryan wants to know. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to what you say about this. What would we say are the top five red flags? To look out for when dating a girl. So this is coming from a man for a girl. I would what really he say. What out, out for? Ryan's out there in the streets of the dating world struggling. He wants to know, what should he be on the lookout for? What's a, what's a, like a screaming red flag when it comes to a female? That she doesn't have girlfriends. And if she does have girlfriends, how long have they been friends for? Is this a girl she's been friends for that's like the flavor of the month? A couple months in? We're friends from high school. Does she have siblings? Does she get along with her siblings still? Does she get along with her family, mother or father still? Um, I, I see, one I of my top that's, five that's is definitely things. how she treats your waitress. If you're at dinner, how she talks to the person walking up. Yep. Does she well, look that at falls them in line with the girlfriend thing. Like, yeah. does she have girlfriends? If Waitress she or a waiter, whoever, yeah. just that female energy. Yeah, just being how you how you treat people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because when you get those girls looking at you like, mm. yeah. Or if she even says on the first date or in, any kind of date within the first few, she's like, Ugh. she's just taking like so long. And then, psh, get up. <laughs> Leave. Don't waste your time. Or gives even a snippet like you didn't cook this right. Out. Yeah. Effing jail. out. Straight to Straight jail. Straight to jail. Straight to jail. Those kind of <laughs> entitled, snooty, um, oh, pretentious, like not, that's not somebody you want. And they'll, maybe they think they're like being boss women energy. No, that's not. Boss mm -mm. women energy treats people with respect. Yeah. Respectful and kind. Yeah, disrespectful. Oh, I just, I can't. I can't handle any kind of disrespect. I will pop off real quick. It, there's nothing that I've makes I've cut me off go. friendships for going out to dinner with girlfriends and they were mean to our waiter or waitress. I'm like, eh, eh. No. Nope. Nope. Well, because you and I were waitresses. We get it. Like, we yeah. know. We were always the night, hey, how can I help you? And it's like, <sighs> you got the you got the weird girlfriend. It's just, it's aggravating. Mm -hmm. You know? Super aggravating. So, yeah, those are good signs. What's I another like one? They say top five. Uh, I don't know. I just gave you my top 
That's my top. That's my number one thing I always think Ship of. Ship nail polish? No, because <laughs> your bestie over here doesn't even have press-ons right well, now. You don't, but you don't have any. That's cool. Yeah, but they are a little it, It's just, it's empty. Looking. So it's it's plain. It's copacetic. I don't know. I feel like severely chipped nail polish. I don't know. I feel like that's that's an issue. And I don't know if it is. It. They can let me know if they've seen a consistent pattern in that. I feel like I've seen a pattern with people who let it go too long without <laughs> one. Just put a look. All you got to do is tap, tap, tap. You know, it's just. Just get a permanent marker. It's even colored in black if you need a to. A little just awareness. It, <laughs> it shows like a commit. I don't know. I feel like that. Maybe some. some. I don't mean like a small little chip. I mean, you know, she painted them red last January and it's December. Oh boy! You know, that's so we went. I mean. We went eleven. We went eleven months, but not if she still a fresh got meeting? Christmas trees, you know, painted on there, and it's Halloween. <sighs> we need to talk. You're like the girl version of Theo right now. <laughs> we need. We I have some questions, baby girl. We what need else? To talk about it. Come on, we've got to have some. What would be a red flag for us if we met a female and it was like she was trying to come on to my dude in front of me? That's a red flag. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, somebody wants to play today. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can take her out in an atmosphere where there's a lot of men. How she does, how get does she get real quick? How does she act in those? So yeah, bring her on the homies. You know, how does she, I guess, interact with, with your people? Yeah, That's- because you know what? I had a boyfriend and, you know, I was taking him all around my friends, having him meet all my friends. These are my peeps. They've been with me at that point in time for a couple years, five, six, seven years. I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. met Sam for the first time Mm. and she's like so tell me what your name is like where are you from where were you raised what high school you went to all this stuff and he goes are you trying to come on to me or something are you trying to hit on me trying to get at me and Sam like was like what she comes (laughs) over and she goes Diana I need to talk to you and I'm like what she's like this is what he just said to me and I'm like Like, this ain't, that's bad. <laughs> like, that's bad. Like, right off the top. Yeah, and I feel like, too, how they talk about you. Like, if you're a dude friend's ask her, you know, something about, hey, like, what do you like about him? And she's already kind of nitpicking and not sure and this and the other. It's like, you should, you know, a woman that's a good woman would be like, gosh, he's so great. He's so wonderful. You know what I mean? You, you. Mm, I know. Someone who blabs a lot into the drama. Like, oh, yeah. She got right off the thing. top. And that's she doesn't true. know Huge you. Huge yeah. red flag. Confidant. Huge. Like Taylor's my confidant. Okay. Yeah. Ryan's my confidant. Sam's my confidant. That's I'm a not, good one. Like, I'm not going to just start. Like, I just meet these people and I'm like, I say I'm annoyed about Ryan, about something. Okay. And then I just meet his brand new group of business contacts or new friends that he's made. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, my husband, this is like, could you imagine? Mm-hmm. That really or, hey, I, I ran into this girl earlier today and it turns out she's, you know, doing this with so-and-so and she's just, no, yeah, no. no, red flag, red flag, we need to get a little red flag yeah, talk, to bring, dee, red flag, talking dee, dee, about, dee. yeah, other people gossiping, uh-huh. just yeah. a shit talker, just a yeah. negative shit talker, only talking about negative stuff, you Ooh. know, she's just only like, a, this she's is for blabbing. guys and girls, honestly. Yeah, blabbing about negativity. Every every issue in any of her relationships was always them. Like, just no No responsibility, no, no ownership. Yeah. Just saying, he was horrible. He's a narcissist. Like, if that's automatically going into that. Nah. And then you go, well, how long were you with him? Two years. Okay, well, why did it take you so long then? If he was such a horrible guy, why two years? And this seems to be like a pa- like ongoing. So the last five, huh? It yeah. was just all, it, all well, their let's faults. take some accountability. It seems like your picker is off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems like we might have a little bit of issues going on inside that you keep choosing men like this. Let's have yeah. some awareness. Awareness. We need some, we need to have some light bulbs start going off Gossip, in that brain, sissy. negativity, treating your, the servers like trash. Trash. Maybe some chip nails. <laughs> What was the other one you said? Listen, we'll let the chip nails slide as long as she's respectful and kind and cool. I don't know. Taylor's not budging. On that. I mean, maybe after a few years, but like those first few dates, you didn't need a joke. Oh, no. Fresh I ain't or going. just use some nail polish remover and go bare. I'm not going on a date without my toes exactly. looking fresh. There you go. Not doing it. See? Not doing it. I mean, I don't know. I just. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Like. We're talking perfection down there. We're looking good down there. 
Yeah, because you're going These out on a date. These are press-ons, so they already look I'm perfect. not saying you're five years in, you woke up next to your wife and she's got chipped nails. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, those first few dates, that, you know, yeah. just check. A little self-care. Check on it. A little self-care on top of self-care, okay? Because and ladies, that goes for you. Like, it, just notice those those little yeah, things, Yeah, your man, I guess. if it's he has some gangly. Pride of ownership is how I look at it. Pride yeah. of ownership to me is something to consider. Absolutely. You can't be looking like a slum out there. You know, you got to be looking little, little, you got to be looking fresh. Got to be looking fresh. I like yeah. looking into the camera a lot. I don't. Yeah. This is your camera. I know, but why would I look way over there? You're right here. Because then you. when you get those nugget bangers where you get those one liners or you think you just look at the camera and say it. I don't know when I have a banger. I got the banger. Give it. I don't know. I just wanted to say that in okay. the camera. <laughs> I'm okay. banging. I'm I think banging. that the, I mean I'm watch after this we'll go home and I'll think of like eighteen more. Oh no, we're gonna have so much more. Flags, but those, this is our those first. Are, those are a great starting. Point. This is our first time in this setting. Okay, so oh, another just red wait. flag. She gives you a hard time about the restaurant you chose. That but was also, something we dude, talked about. Something that's really unattractive is being like, "Where do you want to go?" Stop it. Stop it. Choose where you want to go. Don't worry about what she thinks. Where do you want to go and see? If her energy matches. If, Why would you put your phone up against this one? I'm going to take it. If Ryan wants to hit me with where do you want to go? Granted, we've been together for 10 and a half years. So this could, one could be off. I say, honey, you wanted to go on this date? Arrive somewhere. I don't I don't care. Just just take me. I don't want to think about yeah. where I have to And Ryan's dinner. always like, wear something slutty. Yeah. That's his is. favorite. I want you to be a fucking hot tonight. I'm yeah. like, all right. I got the outfit. I'll do that part. Mm -hmm. You make reservations. Just put the Uber address yeah. in and that, that's, that's where we're showing up. Yeah. And Good I won't go. say anything. I'm yes. stoked. I'm Doesn't stoked. matter. We can Love show it. up at the Mickadee's parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. In and out burger. Don't care. Take me there. Um. So yeah. What's our next one? Okay. Um. Do you want me to look too if there's any fresh fresh? How do you find genuine friends and women to do life with from Cassie? You know, how do you find genuine friends? You have to be a genuine friend. Whatever you want, you have to be first. That's, you that's have to be law. who you want to attract. Yeah. Don't you're you're not out there looking for what kind of man you want? What kind of friends you want? You develop on who do I need to be? Mm -hmm. What kind of friend do I want to be? What yep. kind of friend do I want? And then I, you need to become that first. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. If you're a transplant in a city, it is going to be hard for you to find some people the first couple of years. Like, I think that the girl who asked this question, her name is Cassie. Mm -hmm. She's in Idaho now. She's in Idaho yeah. now and she's not from there. And mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to find some quality people that you vibe with, and but you'll get there. You meet one girl, and then that girl invites you to a thing where you meet a couple more girls. Mm -hmm. And But you have to also put yourself out there. Yeah, and you I have think, to say, Cassie, hey, you do have, obviously, this massive community of amazing women, right? So it's also what kind of pressure do you put on girlfriends that you're – we don't see our girlfriends all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's – if we didn't work together, I mean, there's times where we see each other two, three times a year. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't put that – that pressure also on friendship of necessarily a time thing where you guys need to get lunch every week or, you know, it's mm -mm. just, it's what, what are your expectations? I suppose as well. And are they realistic? Cause you're in the age group right now where people have little kids. Mm -hmm. So, and husbands and wives and, and maybe and, they can't get lunch every single week. No. So you really maybe could start focusing on yourself, becoming the best version of you in all aspects of your life. Yeah, your be own best friend. And giving yourself that extra time that you have. And I know working out is a good thing, but I'm talking about like reading the Bible, journaling, self-development, and other like mentorship classes. Mm -hmm. Doing that, and then you'll attract those kind of females coming in. And and maybe you won't get lunch once a week. Maybe you'll get but lunch once a year. But your home is even just text. Oh, once a year. Oops. You know, I mean, once a month. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Maybe you'll on get lunch or... only once a year. <laughs> I mean, there's times, Charles, I'll see her once every five, six months, and we live in the same area. You know, yeah. it's like, it doesn't mean anything. That doesn't change the bond that will show up whenever yeah. it's needed. Absolutely. And we're always still there to shoot the shit or, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, you just have to become that girl that you want to be as a friend, and those will be the women that you naturally attract. 
that come into your life and that love you for who you are. And even if they are shit bags, let's talk about now if a girl, that new friend that you make ends up being a shit bag. We don't need to create the drama. We don't need to let the drama linger on. You just stop feeding that drama. Zero contact. If someone's creating drama in your life, zero contact. That's how you handle it. That's how, I don't think it's wise to go and f- keep fighting with yeah, her. Yeah, if we're back at this and age forth, and you have friends forth. around you that you have any kind of like constantness where they're like doing you dirty, you're doing you wrong. That's not a them issue anymore. That's mm-hmm. a you issue. We're at the age where it's like. Cut it out of your life. It's got to go. Mm-hmm. It's got to go. And you need to make space for something that's good. Mm-hmm. And that, that negative space is taking up a whole lot of goodness that could be happening, but you're mm-hmm. too focused on proving your rightness or proving their wrongness. And it's like, just let that yeah, go. Yeah, and they'll be like, or they'll be like hurt deeply from ever wanting to form new relationships with women because of what so-and-so did and what so-and-so did. It's like, you can't harbor that and bring it in because then you're just going to create mm-hmm. this pattern and cycle. Mm-hmm. So, so you can't give people pressure like that when you become friends or start making these relationships. There can't be, it has to just... Say your piece yeah. and move on with your good self. That's all you got to do. Yeah. I just, I can't fathom being at this age and still having like drama. No. Ugh. No. I'm trying to. It look doesn't up. mean people don't start it. I mean, we have got girls say stuff about us all the time, but it's not worth my, t- it's, it's funny. You know, it's, that's all good. It's all good. You uh-huh. just, you keep disliking me over there, boo boo. Yeah. I, I know. I, <laughs> it's I, okay. I can't handle that either. I'm like. I don't I'm care. sorry, what did, what did, who, who said what? Oh, all right. I'm like, I don't even know who that is. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Never met her. <laughs> so. Okay. I've had people come up to me at <laughs> bars when we're out, like in, you know, the area where we're from. Yeah. And they'll be like, so-and-so told me this about you. And I'm like. That's also a red flag. Who? <laughs> and they're like, so-and-so. I'm like, who's that? And then I'm like, well, what are they? And they said, what? And then I'll ask you, and I'm like, what do they look like? I'm like, you got a picture? I'm like, I have no idea who that person is. I don't think Never I've ever met them. Oh, yeah. they said they know you really well. No, they don't. This one guy said that I gave him a lap dance. First off, oh, that yeah. is like I extremely. That. Ryan was so upset. Dude, this guy came up they to Ryan at the bar. Immediately. This little, <laughs> this young man, like he was like 23 years old. Ryan's like third, Ryan's like 40. Okay. This happened like three, four years ago. And this guy goes up to Ryan and goes, oh man, I, I've been hanging out with you a little bit tonight. You're so cool. I just want to let you know your wife gave me a lap dance before you guys got married. And he was like, what? And you know, if you knew Ryan, you would know, but basically the long story short is I get the phone call. This fucking guy just told me this, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, who, what? And so then I'm like, well, what's his name? And I'm like, what is he talking about? And so then I call Sam because he says Sam was there. And so, and the only times I've ever been to sports top is with Sam. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, do you know what guy? And she's like, oh, I know. Well, we're playing pool and you're just like at the other end of the table, like twerking to distract the other player. I'm like, that's not a lap dance. That's how he felt. He felt like he got a lap dance. He felt like he got a personal lap dance. Yeah. And he tells my husband he got a personal lap dance. That was a bad one. I'll tell you that one. It wasn't severely bad, no, but remember. it was, but it was, it was bad. You guys did not last long after like King in Lake, this area. We left, out. we left after that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right. No, I remember. I remember. Yeah. First he gets into a fight with the guy I lost my virginity to. Now he has another guy. Yeah, telling I moved him to house shortly after. So I remember. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> We're going to have to tell that story before. I'm looking at questions. Did of- you and Ryan go over that when you guys talked was like. The jealousy, how he's like tried to manage it, how you've learned to kind of, did you guys talk about that at all? You guys should talk about that sometime. Cause I think we did. I don't that think a lot of people struggle go, with. I don't think we got super into that, but. Cause it, I think a lot of people would assume it's like, oh, everything's so secure and all things. It's like everybody still has, you know, and, it, and it's all good. Oh yeah. No, I'm, t- I'm a secure person. I have never one time in my life seen you get jealous until rain. Yeah. I've ever, well, I've always just wanted my boyfriends to prove to me that they were into me. And so it's like, if they were going to go flirt with a girl in front of me, I'm like, that's it. That's the sign. You're not the one for me. Yeah. Because the guy who's into me wouldn't do that. Or even if like you had a dude who's sitting with a bunch of girls, it just, it never phased you. Mm -mm. It was just like, whatever. I know who I am. Yeah. And so that's fine. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. And I wasn't ever into playing games too, which I think really threw him for a loop too. And I was like, hey, this isn't working out. And they're just like, what? What do you mean? And I'm like, like I saw what you did. Yeah. Earlier. I saw that. I saw you like. I saw you side the- eye. Yeah. I saw that. I didn't say anything, but I saw it. I saw it. 
And that shows your character. And I'm out. See you And later. they're like, what? what? It's yeah. like, mm. that's all. I seen what I needed to see. <laughs> Immediately no. Immediately no. Immediately no. Immediately no. <laughs> I've seen what I needed to see and I'm done. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I guess this one's kind of similar. Oh, well, no, it's a little different. Morgan asked tips on how to meet similar growth business minded friends locally. Got to get out of your comfort zone and get in the rooms and it sucks. Yeah. If you want to meet someone now locally on a local level, level on a local level, I don't know how you would do that. Farmers we don't markets, do that. mingle around with the, you know, the, there's all sorts of people who make jams or bracelets or this or that. Yeah. It depends collaboration, on, it I suppose. Depends on, I guess what your, your business is, yeah. but, um, just trying to find other local business owners. We're not talking about like conglomerates with like the America tire brand and there's an America tire all on every corner. Like, you know, it's like finding those homegrown businesses in your mm -hmm. area and being like, Hey, like, let's connect. Let's talk over coffee like let's collaborate like you know I'd like to get to know you that's that's really it it takes you stepping out of your comfort zone and asking yeah. those people to meet and it's so nice it's not always going to be locally and that's okay too yeah it's not and you and know I what go to first you have to su support all the businesses around you it's like when you support all the businesses around you and you pump them up you know like yo that's amazing what you're doing or hey that's really cool that's really how that that starts you know mm -hmm. is we should all be supporting one another because this is not easy mm -hmm. right i completely agree so yeah that's yeah. what you should do should be don't be a pussy get out there don't be a get out there tiger make it happen <laughs>